Okay, this recording is going to go fairly fast. It just kind of goes over some of the things you need to know for the test tomorrow. So bins, if it's binomial settings, so you need to tell me whether it's binary, two outcomes, yes or no, uh, one or two, zero, or uh, just you need to make sure there's two outcomes. Tell me whether or not it's independent, if each trial is independent. Uh, are there a fixed number of trials? And do each one of them have the same probability for the success in the same trial or in each trial? You need to know how to do the ind uh, tell me what the what independent means. You just need to know the definition of that. Binomial theorem, the probability that x equals k. That's the k is the exact number of success. So n choose k, so the number of independent trials, and we're going to choose the exact number of successes. P right here is the probability of success. Remember, this is the complement, so it's the probability of failure, and then n minus k. You might want to recall that uh, <clears throat> this right here and this right here will add up to n. Okay, so make sure that those add up to n. Thank you. Now I'm going to go to the next page. Draw a normal curve. Make sure you label it. Uh, make sure you know your 68, 95, 99.7 rule and how to split up the percentages. Okay, that's the empirical rule. Probability distribution model. Remember, you're, they, it must add up to 1 and they must be between 0 and 1. I think that is a T. That must, that must be a T right there. Must be between 0 and 1. All right, now, probability that X is greater than 1 right here. Uh, you simply, uh, the ones that are greater than 1 are these two, so you just add them together, and that's 0.60. And because it's not equal to 1, you add the probabilities of 2 and 3. So just what I was saying. Let's go to the next one. How do us, you need to know how to assign digits from a simulation and, and a probability model. So the law of large, and you need to know the law of large numbers definition. So for instance, uh, if I go back to this, these are not um, divisible by 10, so these would be whole numbers, or sorry, two-digit numbers that I would use to assign digits. All right, let's progress. Now, for instance, ex uh, if I had this right here, these are all divisible by 10. This would be 0, 0 to 29. This would be, since this is a difference, this is 50, this would be 30 through 8, uh, 0.79, or 30 through 79, and then this would be 80 to 99. And that would represent two-digit numbers. Now, expected value when you give a probability distribution model. Notice it's 0 times 0.30, 1 times 0.50, so on and so forth, you get 0.90. Now, if it's in a binomial setting, you just do n times p. Now, remember, you must be able to interpret in the context of the problem, so make sure you know what the expected value means. You need to know the definition or the purpose of a simulation. What does a simulation do for you? Counting principle. For instance, if I have the number of combinations on a lock, that's what I want to find. And let's say uh, there's three blanks. The first one must be a letter, no vowels. The second one must be a number. The third one must be a number, but numbers can't repeat. Well, I have 21 letters. That's letters without the vowels. Ten numbers, ten numbers. So drawing a picture also helps. 1,890 is the answer. Uh, permutation, order matters. Combinations, order doesn't matter. Remember, here are your two formulas. Make sure. Now, you won't have any specific uh, questions regarding these two. You just need to know uh, when to use permutations and when to use combinations. Uh, you definitely will need to know how to do a probability, what you want over what you have. Make sure you understand uh, how each permutation and combination works with these. Now, let's say uh, if you have a simulation, you need to know that step one is the simplest event. Give me the probability. Step two is assign the digits. Tell me, is it a one-digit or a two-digit? And step three, explain what one trial would be and how, you, how you're going to conduct the simulation. Are you going to choose 10 digits at a time? Are you going to use 20 digits at a time? Okay. And what again, what is one trial? Do the simulation. Make a frequency chart. Make sure you're doing this. And then answer questions based on frequency chart. And then, uh, if binomial, you can use binomial CDF and compare your answers to what you got using the frequency chart. So whatever you get here in the frequency chart should be very close to what you get if it's a binomial setting 
whenever you use a binomial CDF. Uh, next, uh, make sure in binomial CDF, K is your success, N is the number of trials, and P is the probability of success. Here's the ways you can get to them on the Casio, and here's the way uh, you get to, now this is how you get to binomial CDF on the Casio, and this is how you get to permutations and combinations on the Casio. And then finally, let's say we have, um, you have the probability that X is less than 5. So we're going to do this right here. X less than or equal to 5. So I, I wrote out numbers 0 through 10. Now notice this is the probability to the left. We're looking for the probability to the left. So finding the probability to the left, we just do binomial CDF 5 N P. So whatever N and P is, but that 5 goes right here. Now, if we want to find the probability right, in other words, the X is probably that X is greater than 5. Well, I circled 6 through 10. That means I need to find 1 minus, because I'm looking for the probability to the right, 1 minus uh, binomial CDF, and that's 5 NP. So whatever NP is, you just fill in. But that use this 5, the number to the left. If I want to find the probability of something in the middle, all right, so between 4 and 7, it's greater than 4, but equal to or less than 7. So 5, 6, 7 are my numbers. I'm going to use binomial CDF of 7, and I'm going to subtract binomial CDF of 4. And then, of course, you just fill in the N and the P. And I believe that is it.